Hello everyone, it's the Farm Sim Guy here, hope you're all doing well today. We are back to have another look at course play. We did our beginners video a couple of months back now and uh, it has taken me a bit, little bit longer than I was hoping to get back to doing this, but I thought today we would take a look at a bit of a beginner's guide to course play for combines. I know a lot of people want to use combines on course play but feel a little bit daunted by it. So what we're gonna do in this video is basically go through the easiest settings, the simplest settings, just to get you started. Uh, we will do a second video where we introduce more than one combine, where we can call um, auger wagons or trucks using auto drive and really get into the nitty gritty of it. But the principle of this vid today is really to get you up and running. Uh, it does refer back to some of the uh, techniques that we used in the original beginners video in terms of the types of course like lands, uh, racetrack, spiral and things like that. So uh, we'll refer to those. But what we're going to do is basically get you started very quickly. I'm kind of hoping this isn't going to be a particularly long video because um, I would like to get you up and running and going with course play as quickly as you can because it's not as daunting as you first think. So let's straight away, without further ado, jump into our combine. We've got a relatively small field here that we're going to cut and the reason for that is I would like to show you combine unloading on the fly, which basically means you set the combine uh, to drive to the truck and unload itself so it becomes very self-sufficient doing it this way which is quite nice particularly works on smaller fields if your fields are a lot bigger it does become not time efficient let's put it that way they're driving across the field a lot of the time looking for trailers but on something like this where it's a very small field it can be a really great way of just setting up a combine and a trailer and going off and doing something else so one to bear in mind so first things first let's get our course set up like I said, um, I would strongly recommend you watch the original Beginner's Guide to Course Play before you jump into this one, because a lot of what I talk about in here I have already covered in there. But let's get a course set up, let's set the combine on its merry way, and then I'll show you some of the, just the nuanced settings that might help you out. So one thing I like to do is power up the combine and just roll it into the field slightly. The reason for this is it will then detect that you are in the field and uh, you won't have any issues sometimes if you're parked out with the field it might not find the field boundary so by doing that it means that it can uh, have the best chance of finding the field boundary that you're in then you've got your two options if you hit delete you'll bring up your little mini menu here now if you can't see this for whatever reason if you hit the escape button and go up to your course play settings here. You want to switch game play friendly HUD um, to deactivate it. You will probably have it activated and actually, let's go back here, if I hit delete now, that is what you'll see. So if you don't want that, which is one that's user friendly for controller players, if you don't want that, you can just go into here switch it to gamepad friendly HUD and deactivate that. So there we go. The other thing that's worth doing is making sure expert mode is activated, something I omitted from the first video, which uh, I apologize for, but yes, always have expert mode activated. It just opens up a whole load of different choices for you. So here we are, there's our combine ready to go. Again, pull up the mini menu here or go through the escape menu. In fact, what we'll do, we'll go through the escape. Basically you can click on the combine name there which will take you to the menu anyway and then you can click on the steering wheel there or alternatively just hit the escape key hit on the steering wheel there so there is our combine I'm about to cut field 142 there so we're going to create a job we are going to switch to course play field work CP field work up there now it has detected the field edge already if it doesn't um, do that straight away you can click on field position and click somewhere over your combine to find it. So um, once we've done that, we want to open course generator. It's worked out the width of the combine already. We only have the one tool. Uh, I would recommend always doing at least one headland. We've got an open field here. We don't have any fences or anything around it to, to get in the way. Um, so the combine should have no issues turning around at the ends of the rows, but 
depending on what's around your field, again, I talked about this in the first video, if, depending what's around your field, if there's lots of trees or a river or something like that or a road, you might want to put a few more headlands in. Basically, you want to give enough space for the combine to be able to turn around within the field so that it doesn't get snarled up on anything out with the field boundaries. So um, for this point, because we've got a wide header and it's a relatively small field, we're going to go for two headlands here. Everything else, I'm going to leave the same. Now, one of the things that's worth talking about is this field center here. So at the moment, we're just going to go down one, turn around and drive back the other way. Now, the problem with that is for half of your field, your auger pipe is going to be pointing into the crop and you don't want that really to happen. You want to have your auger pipe on the outside as much as possible. So um, it may not work on this one because it's quite a narrow field, but what we'll do the one I would recommend you do is lands, um, which basically means um, it will cut out basically portions of the field at a time and it will allow you to cut those out, which gives the opportunity for the combine to have its auger pipe on the outside of the field where the crop has been cut more often than not. Now, it doesn't work on the first row, obviously, because it has to cut through the middle of the field. Um, on bigger fields, that can be an issue because the combine can only get up so far across the field before... It's full and needs unloading, and there it will cut in and wait. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it will get right through the field in one go, and then every time it goes through that land after that, it will have the auger pipe on a cut piece of land so you can get a tractor or a truck alongside it. So I'm going to drop rows per land. I tend to leave it on six. Default is six. Most fields, if you're running um, a combine on it and it's a big field leave it on six for the purposes of this i'm going to drop it down a little bit so you, you get an idea for what i'm what i'm trying to do here other than that everything else should stay the same so we just hit generate fieldwork course here so there's our course looking good now a couple of other settings worth knowing as well so let's click on our tractor with the cogs here with cp up there so you know it is Course play related settings. Now what we want to do is scroll down here. Combine settings. Now you can have options here. One is stop while unloading. So basically if you pull a truck alongside the combine, it will stop moving. The other option is if you want to drive the auger wagon, you want to run alongside the combine as, it, as it's moving and you don't want the combine to stop at all, you can obviously switch that to activate it. That basically means the combine will carry on when you pull up and it will unload whilst moving. Now, for the purposes of this, I'm going to leave it on deactivated because we're not going to touch that. What we are going to do is switch on combine self unload. So let's do that. That's activated. Um, we're going to leave unload on first head activated, um, unload on first headland activated, beg your pardon. Um, and we're going to leave straw swath activated. So basically, we will get straw swath behind the combine. Again, you can switch that off if you don't want to get rid of the straw. Um, and that's your lot. So, let's go back. Everything is looking good. You can see our start point for the course there. You can see our finish point in the middle of the field. Um, we are going to run this. So again, we hit delete. We need to make sure it is on first waypoint. We haven't saved the course yet, so we will leave that because uh, we should get through this all in one go. And we are just going to hit the play button. And we are off gathering our crop, there you can see it pumping into the combine now. So, that is good. Everything looking good there. We're going to jump out of the combine. It is in full blow mode. And what we're going to do, because we set it to self unload, the only thing you need to do is make sure that the truck is within the boundaries of the field. Not necessarily all the way in either. Um, you can park it on the edge of the field. I like to park it just within the boundaries of the field. So basically, it can detect the truck when it is full. Course play is very clever. It will scan the area and see if there's a truck available for it. So let's uncover that. Let's turn that off. We don't need course play up there. So that should be all we need to do for this trailer. Um, so we'll go back to watching the combine and see how he gets on. So we're in the combine now. We are just going to wait. He's already on 34%. We're going to wait till he gets full and we will show you what will happen. Now, obviously, I'm not going to drive this at all. This will be purely run by course plate. 
so we'll see how he gets on. We did put two headlands on. We could have probably got away with one here, but um, as for this demo, it doesn't really matter. You can play around with that stuff, and I would strongly recommend you do that. It is one of those things, the more you play with it, the more you try stuff, um, the more you'll get your head around what it can do, what it's capable of, because it is a very, very powerful tool. Um, we do get some criticism sometimes that, of oh, course, player, you're cheating, you're not, you're not driving the combine, you're not doing the game properly, but this is a bona fide way of running the game, in my eyes. You can do a lot more work, especially on big maps. I'm on Chilliwack here, um, which is obviously a 4x map. Um, you want to be able to run more than one machine or be able to do one job at a time. So from that perspective, this is where course play comes into its own. It is a very powerful tool from that perspective. But here we are on 85%. Hilariously, this could end up right next to the truck when it gets full. Um, but that is just uh, the luck of the draw, really, sometimes. So we're going to hit 90% here. As you can see, it's first headland finished. It will loop around and start the next headland. It will go down a little bit further, actually, and then cut in. So um, you will see it will have to manoeuvre itself slightly to get lined up with the truck. But 92%, 93%. It really is going to be right next to the truck. 94, 95. It will move out from where it is, though. It's too far away from the truck to be able to uh, get it from there. So what will happen now is... There we go, 98. It is going to go far enough past that it's going to have to reverse. 99. There you go. This is all done by the combine and course play. I am not touching anything here. So it's already worked out where the truck is. And it is going to move into position and it's going to unload into the first hopper. Now, one thing that um, course play is way better at than it was in FS19 is dealing with dual hopper trailers. Seems to have no issues with it anymore. So um, if you're concerned about that, that has now gone as, a, as an issue. But what it'll do is it'll unload here, it will remember where it got to in the field, and it will return there and continue to uh, do its work. So we'll let this unload. Not the fastest unloader in the world, but um, there we go. We are down to the last thousand litres. Once it's done, it will just reverse back position, fold in the pipe, and get started again, which is big. There we go. Drops the header. And aligns itself perfectly back to the field. Brilliant. Look at that. So we're going to put this on a little bit of a time lapse now because it's going to do another headland. And then I kind of hope that uh, we've set this up with a small enough land that it will cut up through the middle of the field so you get a feel for how it will cut one side of the field and then the other. Um, so let's see how that goes. see there the common has finished the two headlands so what it's going to do now is going to head down and start doing the land now this is a very narrow field so I'm kind of hoping I've set this up correctly but but to all intents and purposes it should split this field in two now um, allowing you to have the auger on the outside most of the time now if you can imagine this field was slightly bigger um, these these lands would be bigger so once you've cleared the first one so you cleared the first row, so let's see where it'll turn in here. There you go. So he's going to clear this land. Now if you can imagine that there was more more wheat uh, to the right there, you would then always be auger on the outside of the crop every time you did it. So there you go, there's the example I was uh, suggesting there, that now, once it's cut that first row out, it could come up this row either way now, 
and the pipe would be exposed on the outside and be able to have a vehicle drive alongside and unload without it needing to drive through crop. Now we're going to hit 100% here. So we're going to see a little bit more of an exotic drive over to the truck. Now, I can't remember if we'd set it to make sure it avoided crop. I think we have. So it should run back the way it's came. Nope, it's going to run through the crop. Oh no, it's not. I thought for a second that it was just going to run through that uh, bit of crop, but we've set it to not um, drive over the crop. So it's found its way around the top of that uncut crop and it's going to unload into the trailer. There we go. It knows exactly where that trailer is and it's going to make sure it unloads into it. There we go. So there you go. That's a perfect example of how Course Play has resolved its issues that it had in FS19 with double hopper trailers. It resets itself. There we go. But it's found the second hopper. Just like so. There we go. It looks like we're going to have a tiny little bit left. Yeah, just a thousand litres. So again, although it's detecting it there, it will go over the back. Stop. It's not going to reset itself, actually, because it managed to unload that thousand litres in the time it took to reverse. But if there was more than that in there, it would have... Um, rolled back forward. So here you can see it returning back to its start point and getting ready to go again. Let's finish that first land. And it will start the second land now. So again, you can imagine these were wider lands. It's always cutting with the pipe on the outside so that you can unload at any point. Now, of course, if you want, don't want the combine to self-unload and you just want to uh, uh, let it run normally and keep on top of things with an auger wagon or a truck you're more than welcome to do that uh, it will do that as well so um, you just need to make sure that you switch that setting off again just as a reminder it is in your course play menu here scroll down combine self unload switch to deactivated and then you are all sorted so there you go very simple way of getting you started with course play. I hope that was helpful. Um, the key with course play is don't get... There are so many settings and you do see so many settings. Um, but you don't need half of them. The defaults are very good for beginners. They will set them to a point at which they'll work very well for beginners. So um, don't worry too much. Just do the bare minimum to get started. The more you play around things, the more likelihood something might not work. So from that perspective, just do the bare minimum change the minimum things you need to and then go on your way now look what's happening here we have finished the field but rather than it stopping at the stop at the end there it's going to take the 29 percent it has in the tank and it's going to drop it into the truck which is very nice and also it will give us an idea of uh, just seeing how it will pick that third hopper knowing that the other two are full very clever look at that fantastic so there we go a very quick very easy beginner's guide to using course play we have used it with self unload here but like i said you can just change our setting to off if you want to drive the auger wagon and run it alongside the combine and do your own unloading be my guest i just thought you would like to see it this way it'll give you the two alternatives but there we go combine folded up now driver's done very easy so 
for now from me the farm sim guy i hope that was helpful i know a lot of people are fresh to course play or wish they could get their head around it and feel a little bit daunted by it but hopefully this video helps you a little bit get your get yourself started with it anyway um of course any questions you have throw them in the comments below we will try and answer them like i said we're going to come back and we're going to do a more exotic version we've got a big field here sitting that will require maybe a couple of combines to run on it and we can run uh, auger wagons and show you how we can collect with um, auto drive as well and um, course play does let you pick up uh, with trailers as well i don't like it if i'm being honest i think it's a little bit more processor intensive um auto drive seems to work very well for me and i am a creature of habit so i, I, I continued to use that but i do know disturbed simulations has got an excellent video on how to use pickup wagons with course play and i think actually he came to the same conclusion that whilst it's very good and works well um auto drive seems to be just that little bit smarter but that's for another day if you've mastered this bit we'll move on to vid number two but thank you very much for watching like i said i hope this was helpful and i will see you all again very soon take care Bye for now.